Today I'm going to do a quick demonstration on taking a 2D side view sketch, bringing it into Gravity Sketch, setting up a vehicle package with correct dimensions, setting up a mannequin, and then building a 3D wireframe drawing. I'm going to start with setting up the vehicle dimensions by going into prefabs, clicking on rigged chassis, and you can see I have a set of wheels and tires here. And the rig chassis is a really versatile tool because you can set up dimensional accuracy with a vehicle just by, you can either uh, push and pull on the arrows or you can uh, push and pull on, uh, you can set up your tire dimensions, your tire width, tire uh, sidewall thickness, uh, rim thickness, uh, or you can just type the dimensions right in here. So I'm going to type in um, a, a wheelbase of uh, 2800. I'm just going off of a, a leading competitor here. I'm going to widen it out to, let's say, 1750 for the track. Um, that gives us an overall width of just about two meters. And I'm going to bump the wheel size up to 21. That's going to give me a pretty nice, exciting proportion. And then from there, um, I can, oh yeah, and I'm going, to, I'm going to click the wheel width to, let's say, 300. If I'm happy with those dimensions, I can click Convert to Revolve Geometry, and that'll make it into an editable uh, revolved object. So I can continue to, to refine and edit the chassis as I see fit, but this gives me a, a dimensional basis to start with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this sketch and now I'm going to scale it to the wheels. So first thing I do is I hold it out near the wheels. So as you can imagine, this is quite a cheated sketch. So I'm just gonna go in and get it close. Then using Smart Move, I'm gonna push the sketch back to the mirror plane. And as you can see, it just snapped itself to the mirror plane. And what I'll do now is, I have the sketch now on its own layer, so I'm gonna just give some transparency to the layer. So now I can just turn the transparency down on the sketch and I have uh, four wheels and tires with dimensional accuracy. Now, in this case, I'm going to stagger the wheels a little bit. So I'm gonna shrink the front wheels slightly. Make sure I maintain ground contact. And then for the rear tires, I'm gonna make them quite a bit wider. So that gives me some, some customization of those dimensions. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring in a mannequin. So I'm gonna go back to my free prefabs menu. I'm gonna select the mannequin, put it into my uh, preview import box. You can see it's facing the opposite way, so I'm gonna spin it around. Click the blue check mark. Now I'm going to move it into the driving position. So I'm going to select my, uh, my control points and put the driver into a very aggressive racing position. You can see what I'm doing is I'm grabbing multiple control points in order to move the legs simultaneously. I want the hip to heel to be almost zero. This is, this is a very aggressive, sporty driving position. Put the driver's hands on the steering wheel. Move the driver down close to the ground plane and move it outward into a driving position. I want to keep the feet just behind the wheels so that uh, we have ingress and egress. And you can see his head is, is right about where it needs to be at the peak of the vehicle. I can duplicate the occupant and create a passenger as well. Maybe the passenger has their, their arms down. So between the sketch, the wheels and tires, and the mannequin, I have everything I need to start a dimensionally accurate package drawing. So now I have everything I need to develop a dimensionally accurate vehicle package drawing over a 2D sketch. And the aim now is to bring my 2D side view sketch into the 3D world and interpret it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my ink brush. 
I'm going to switch on planar and I'm going to start to trace out. First thing I'm going to do is switch to a black brush here. I like to use my flat black brush because it gives me a nice ink like line. And I'm going to just start to sketch out the main character lines of the vehicle. I'm just going to try to get as close as I can because I can always edit the lines later. And as you can see, I'm, I'm editing my lines. And what's great is when you're editing a planar line, it stays planar. So even if I move the line out over the wheel, and even if I tilt the line, let's say to give it some plan shape, I can continue to edit it as a planar curve. So now I'm beginning to bring my character lines out in space, referencing the original sketch. Now, even though I want to be very precise, I'm, I'm also allowing a little bit of looseness in the sketch. I want it to be a clean sketch, but at the same time, I want it to be uh, very expressive. So with planar sketching, I can also shift the drawing plane around. So I can grab it with my, uh, my opposite controller. And let's say I want to design some wheel openings. So I'm going to move my drawing plane just past the wheels. If I hold the trigger lightly, I can snap it to the vertical axis. And then I want to have a very dynamic, expressive shape. And again, that, that line will remain in a planar state. Until I decide otherwise. So I can bring that line in a little bit, give it a little bit of tilt. So here's a good example of taking a line off of planar. So I, now I want to get that line to wrap, wrap under the body a little bit. So I'm going to select, go into edit mode. I'm going to turn planar off. And now I can select some of those points independently and start to tuck the body in. So I'm going to do the same on the rear. So this is where I'm deviating a little bit from the sketch because I was a little uncomfortable with this square and boxy back wheel. But I did like the idea of having non non-circular wheel, wheel openings. I think that's very, very fresh and very dynamic. So again, I'm going to take it off of planar. I can start to tuck in those, those shapes. Get the right spacing over the wheels. Okay, and then let's say I want to build out this, this greenhouse a bit. So I can take the center line, duplicate it, move it out with Smart Move. Then I can give it a bit of of tilt in order to give a sense of tumble home. Also, by dropping the line a little bit, I start to get a sense of um, curvature between the center line and the side of the greenhouse. And again, I want to get this line off of planar so that I can um, 
so I can start to turn this 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 uh, base of windscreen around. I'm just going to extend that all the way to the center line. Just about getting the right curvature. And let's say we want to start getting some plan shape. So I can move the drawing plane now to the horizontal position just above the ground line. I can start to sketch out a plan shape. And see this is a little bit too low, so I can just bring it up. Join the center line. Bring it back in alignment with the sketch. You can also duplicate it Give it a little bit of tilt. Maybe scale it just a little bit. Duplicate it again. Maybe widen it a bit. Give it a little bit of dihedral, a little bit of tilt. Bring in my fenders just a little bit. I'm just giving myself a little bit of a plan shape in my in my rocker my sill my sill uh, shape here bring that up just a little bit <clears throat> now one of the things the sketch didn't quite didn't quite define was the shape of the uh, side glass so I'm gonna make something up here I'm gonna go ahead and take my horizontal drawing plane and bring it up to the belt line level And I'm going to sketch a plan shape for the cabin. I'm going to simplify points. And I'm going to more or less match the plan shape of the cowl that I drew before. Then I want to get that line continuing in plan shape. So right now I'm just defining the plan shape. And then I will define the side shape. So I'm going to take, take that line and tilt it and move it back down. So now I have the base of windscreen figured out. Now I'm going to take it off of planar so that I can start to give it the shape I want. In the side view. One thing you can do in edit mode is you can also thicken your line just by grabbing individual points. You can change your thick and thin. So 
So I want to do some end view. So I'm actually going to take my drawing plane, move it to the end view, but I'm going to tilt it. I'm going to move it just behind the occupants because I want to have this this element here, this kind of roll, roll structure element. Now I want to do an end view line. This is going to have a really strong cam tail, so I'm just going to sketch the end view of that line, get it close to where I want it. And so now I'm really starting to get a sense of the, the shape and volume. At this point, I feel comfortable enough to turn off uh, my drawing plane and start throwing a little three-hand sketch line in there. Just to help define some of those surface transitions. That keeps it a little bit looser while maintaining a sense of precision. But if you feel like you want to continue working in, in uh, with planar turned on, or you want to use some of the other precision, more precision drawing methods, that's fine as well. I'm just putting a few cross section lines. to represent the, uh, the cross-section of the vehicle. So now I have a very nice, clean, complete wireframe that I can use uh, to start sketching and start building. It's dimensionally accurate and represents the intent of the 2D sketch.